Okay, we will call the Board of Works and Safety meeting to order. Um, okay, it is 5.01 p.m. on Tuesday, September 24th, 2024. Roll call, please. We go. Here. Smith. Here. Daniel. Here. In front of you are the minutes from our last meeting on September 10th. Were there any changes or corrections? I did have one, and that is, and I sent these to Rosie earlier, but under my report, Wayne TV is misspelled. Besides that, was there any other changes or corrections? Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes with the noted change. Sorry. Motion, motion seconded. Further discussion? All those favor show the usual sign. It is unanimous. Next up is the street closings. Uh, first one is the Skeleton Festival on October 19th from 12 to 7 p.m. That's downtown. Um, she couldn't make it, but she said it began to watch some time. Okay. Um, and that's just in the 100 and 200 block of West Van Buren. Well, again, Chauncey. Oh, and Chauncey Street, I'm sorry. Yeah, Chauncey Street. So it's pretty much the same as the first one. Gotcha. Um, who would we see who has a son? Yeah. Um, everybody in there, Mike has them. And the fire department, but we don't know if looked at it. You have a problem with the skeleton bus? No. Shoda's not going to say anything about it, so she's just... I think one of the things we've got to start considering is to break down all these down.
Any questions, comments, concerns? I make a motion we approve the parish festival as presented. Motion second for the discussion. All those in favor for the usual sign. It is unanimous. What else do we got? Let's do Vargo wedding. All right. Last time we uh, tabled the Vargo wedding. Um, Gary, for your information, um, we had concerns about how many roads and how long the stretch was going to be closed off. We also didn't know if it was going to be closed off the whole time or just during the time where people are going back and forth. So we wanted to hear from you on that. Right. Yeah, Chad and I met out there at the property uh, at Gates and West Park Street. Um, and he is one to close off the three areas that he wants to close off in the private lane. Um, it's only going to be for one hour. Yeah. And then they're going to cross over and go to the 4 H ground after they all cross. The, the they're on their Frogger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he wants to close it. North Forest Parkway. West Park Drive and West Park Street and West Park and uh, Lincoln Way. He, and as we were at the property, I mean, he is right. As the ceremony is going on, he's afraid that trucks and stuff would be coming down through there and being all loud, which there was when we were meeting. There was lots of vehicles, not lots, I guess I should say, a few vehicles traveling through there that were a little bit loud. And sometimes they get on them. But it, it's only for one hour, for one or two. Thoughts on the board? And that's the way I take, so. <laughs> It'll be okay for an hour. So, I'm, I'm they just trying to cross. They could get around if they came down. They could Obviously, we'd let residents back in there today and we live right here because they're not here. So, so, are you manning these areas? We will have an officer in the area, yes. He'll try to take care of all three of the sections there. So, I don't think we have a problem with the Hill Drive portion because people can turn up and down the drive there. Um, and there's really no other outside of the 4-H grounds. There's really no other connector there between there and the wedding location. Okay. I also don't necessarily have an issue with Westgate's Road and Forest Parkway's intersection. Because again, now you could have people that get down there and go oh crap and have to turn around and then go down hill and then go oh crap. And, I mean, I think you're going to have some issues. I know it's only for an hour. I'm not trying to make a big deal of it, but. The, the, the one issue I do have is the Park Street one, and I'm not sure how to handle that one. Because ultimately, you almost have to cut it off at Lincoln Way. So you have one, two, three, four, five, four, five. I think there's five houses on that stretch. Yeah, yeah four or five. Because yeah. I'm thinking there's one, then a rental. Then Langlow, then Ryan, then Brooks. Oh, it is Langlow. Okay. Yeah. So my point is, is I think you can have. You can have a block here, a block A here, that nobody can get through. Down a park and hill slash park up. I think the challenge is going to be up there because you have homes people have to get to, and up there because there's homes people are going to get to. So, well, that, that was going to be one of my, yes, yes. One of the things of saying, like, they need to notify each of the residents that are going to be within the closure zone, if you will. And again, I know it's only an hour, but 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 when our dispatch gets calls are like, why is the street closed? Why can't I get to my house? Then I mean, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pin break. <laughs> Mike, he wants to pin the dick. Dan wants to pin this on you. <laughs> okay. Is everyone okay with that, generally? Yeah. Okay. The notification of the yes. residents around the <clears throat> So, I'll make a motion we approve the Vargo wedding as presented, street closure for the Vargo wedding, with the caveat that, uh, I'll say someone from the Vargo family notifies the residents that, are, that, that have homes within the closure area. And preferably, let's see, this is September 28th, and it's the 24th. So, within the next two days, two or three days, preferably. Motion seconded. Further discussion? All in favor of the usual sign. It is unanimous. We have one more. We have another marathon. Okay, you're going to wait till next time. Okay. Okay. Well, then we'll wait till next time. Uh, Encroaching for 1277 East Pebble Creek. Come on up. I need your name and address and what you want to do. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Paul Sobel, address is 1277, Pebble Creek Run. Um, and what do I want to do? Well, <coughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I went down and asked what I can get on there for a fence. We need some kind of fencing. We have two dogs now. We didn't get playing the second one, but we got two dogs now. Um, I have four cats. I didn't play more than two. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we, we were looking at, I was told I could only go backwards and over and then back. I can't go to the side at all. But driving around the street, there was a house at 656 Redstone that has their house, their fence goes all the way to the street and all the way back to the property line. I don't think, I don't think with the utilities that I'm going to be able to go backwards behind the build line. And then when I look at the diagram that they gave me, I'm looking and I see a 35 BL, so I'm assuming that's a 35 foot B, uh, build line also. So my question is, instead of going backwards, could we go sideways, which would be east? So how do I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the process. I was just going down and trying to find out what the process was, and now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, the 35-foot building line and the 20-foot utility easement and going on back behind it. <clears throat> so I guess part of me, Well, was it was it Nathan that told you that um, the building inspector or the building? I'm sorry, building and planning director at the county. Yeah, uh, I don't remember if his name is Nathan. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's Tom. Maybe that sounds right, Tom. Okay. <laughs> and I don't I don't want to go all the way up to the sidewalk. I'm just. You know, we have a little flower bed there. I was thinking about just uh, just on the other side of the flower bed to be able to just get a, a lawnmower through there. So the other question would be is if for some reason in the covenants it didn't come out that. But I don't know that Nathan would have or somebody from the building and planning department would have brought that up. Right. They just said it was a plotted piece of land. I don't know what that yeah. yeah. You probably know more than I <laughs> this first question. Yes, sir. Have you already contracted with someone to build a fence for you? Not yet. You have not yet. Okay. So we still have the opportunity, if you will, to work through this a little bit because Absolutely. you're not under a timeline. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I, I put up a, a 17 by 20 little chicken wire or just to keep the dogs. I mean, yeah. they're, they're a huge relief to my wife and I. <laughs> <laughs> she had she had neck surgery and it was just pulling on her. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a. So, but yeah, that's but I put out there as just a temporary post and put them up something. So I do have time. Yes. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do. I, I'd like to table this. Okay. Okay. Because it may change. Um, so let, let me let's do two things. Number one is. Um, why don't we make sure your contact information goes to Dan over here? Dan works in that office every day, so uh, or near that office every day, so um, he can check on that, do all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is, if for some reason you can't go to the side, and I don't know why that would be, but if for some reason you can't, 
is what you have sketched here to the back, is that acceptable to you? To us it would be acceptable. I don't know if it would be because you got you got other lines running by rather than just the electric. You said UDE was what? Yeah, what is UDE is 20 also. Yeah. So the only thing I, I mean, the only, so, so the whole reason why you have to come here, obviously, is that you're encroaching on our easement, let's say, right? Um, and so what we always tell people is, is if you're going to build a fence in that area, and the easement, mm -hmm. and we have to get in there for utilities for any reason. Do we have utilities back there? We do not. We do not. Northeast. Northeast RMC does, though. And okay. Home Oh, okay. And, yeah, and also media pump. Yes. So, one of the things we always say is that for some reason we have to get back there, we will try to notify you if we can. If it's an emergency, we will try to remove things as gently as possible, but it'll be on you to replace. Right, okay? I understand. But with that being said, the reason I'm bringing that up is is that um, have you called in utility locates yet or anything? Not like yet. I asked him, he said, not yet. Don't okay. Wait. So the reason I'm bringing that up is, is it may be something where you don't want to go check with Northeastern <coughs> RMC and just get their kind of like get their blessing, if you will. Because yeah. um, there, there is an encroachment agreement already from 2006 that allowed for the for the shed, and, okay. and their rules then was three feet away from the line. From 2010, you said? Uh, two, 2006, I think it was. 2006. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a long time ago. But, yeah. 2006 is when they had the encroachment, but that was just for the shed above. If you're not doing any digging. Yes, gotcha. And I understand that they need to come through and wipe it out. They got to wipe it out. Yeah, unfortunately. So, but okay. So, um, what I was going to say was, why don't we go ahead and kind of just make sure we don't have any questions for you, so that you don't. If for some reason we're going to keep the same plan, you don't have to come back in again. Okay. okay. Um, so. For the current plan that's proposed, you guys have any questions about that? Okay. So, Paul, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Dan is going to we need to make sure you have your or he has your contact information. Correct. Um, and then he'll check on that tomorrow, let you know in some way, shape, or form, I'm assuming by the end of the week or something, to let you know kind of where things are at and, and maybe there's another com another conversation. Right. If that doesn't turn out. Then um, let us, uh, you know, let us know one way or another, and we'll just have it on the board of agenda for the next meeting, and then we'll just go through the approval process without you having to come back. Totally understand. Okay, I don't want you to have to come back. So, what's your name? Yep. Email or phone number. So when um, we were here two years ago to put up the open air pavilion as our outdoor classroom, as we went through the state design approval process, the state said we had to have real bathrooms on site. They gave us a two-year deadline, which is December 31st of this year. Um, we started to work with community foundation and um, local organizations, and we um, we. Uh, Drew Wellborn from Whitley Manufacturing 
agreed to donate a shell of a modular, which is exactly like the one out at Miami Village, their community center. Um, he would donate the shell, and the value of that was written into gift bait. And so the community foundation granted us $50,000 to put towards this project. The shell um, next week is being shipped to Whitco Kerr Academy. Their construction trade students are doing the interior. So we've, you know, this is a large project for us, and it will help us meet the state deadline. We need to connect to sewer, uh, to sewer city sewer. Um, we're already connected to water and electricity, but obviously we'll increase our usage through this structure. Um, so I guess I just want to, I am scheduled for a BZA meeting next week. We've already got the state design approval for it. We've I've <laughs> lots of meetings with the building department. Uh, I feel like we're pretty much there. Um, I guess I just want to make sure that we're, there's some questions in regards to connecting to sewer, and I also was wondering if you guys would consider waiving the connection fee for us. Uh, so my first question is about where the sewer is currently. It's on their side. It okay. runs um, from the property along Hanna. Uh -huh. There's a man on the corner of Hanna and Tower View. Yep. And then it runs towards Thorn Apple, um, but it's flowing towards um, Tower View. It is in the grass, so that's so we're not tearing up infrastructure or anything right. like that. Right. And we are using a licensed contractor to do all for that. that. Yes. It is really deep. It's probably 16 foot deep in that area. I told Rachel it's probably a 10 inch main. Yeah. And per our environmental study that the city did on our property, all of the dirt and soil will stay on the property. We're not removing it off of our property. Um, so questions about, let's start with questions about the project. Anybody have questions about the project? Uh, Lisa, for your information, just so you're aware, uh, so the property given Gardens is on currently um, is property the city used to own. Giving Gardens asked to effectively start using the property. We said yes. And then they said, hey, we're growing too big. Can we kind of have the property? And we're like, well, we don't want it. So that's fine. You can have it. Um, there is a reverter clause in there. So if for some reason they either cease or decide to move or whatever, we get that property back. Um, but ultimately, uh, obviously, they're doing some good stuff down the top there. And, um, and this is just an expansion for the operation. It is. I mean, not only does this help us meet our state required deadline, but um, our programs are growing. We are an outdoor school, and so having this modular will also help us to have, like, a safe place to go to if a storm comes through and we don't have to cancel classes. Um, and we could also extend our hours because we'll have this heated and cooled space that we could go into for temporary relief from the weather. So it will just help us grow as an organization as well. Any questions about the project? When you plan completion by? So they expect everything to be done by the end of November. I believe he wants to do site work next weekend, and I don't know if that's the trenching also or not. I would have to ask him. Um, they, he would just need to contact us between okay. the 7th and 30th. Right. Okay. And then, I guess if, there's a, if it's going to be waived, do you still want the contractor to contact your office, Rosie, for like the process that would normally happen, and then they contact us for the inspection. They'd still have to get them on the bus, yeah, whenever they had it ready before they go to them for an inspection, right? Okay. okay, so the contractor needs to contact your office. Okay, I assume is that part of the normal process? Is that something he'd be aware of, anyways? Okay, yeah, they're connected to our sewer system. Okay, yeah. um, I'm learning lots here, so. <laughs> So currently, they are paying for water and electric, but not sewer, right? So this would add effectively to the sewer customer. Mm -hmm. yes. Any issues or thoughts, opinions on uh, waiving the $1,000 cap fee for giving gardens as a nonprofit um, educational uh, group? Is this a community I, I think historically, there have been a couple of times we've done it, but uh, it's not super Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, they still got paid. Yes, we've always paid. 
but just our, the history, you guys did waive our water and electrical connections, but we do pay monthly bills, yeah. I'll make a motion we waive the tap fee for giving gardens or sewer. Motion second for the discussion. All the third for the sign. It is unanimous. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yep. Next up is the plan approval for Pottery <laughs> Knob, one of my favorite names for a flat. Uh, I, I like I like the Pottery Knob. Uh, uh, I'm assuming Nathan is not here today. <laughs> I don't see him here, so um, so I, Dan, I know you and kind of talked about this at the last meeting. This is just a two lot. Flat, right? A two-lot subdivision, if you will. An individual splitting their property into two. Pass, me, pass through the uh, plan commission with what two? I think two minor. Um, <coughs> two minor conditions. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up is pay request number six for Shanko Construction. Yeah. Uh, requesting you pay the day at $482,400.15. Uh, that was, I'm trying to read it, uh, or fencing around the pickleball courts. Um, pretty much everything that's done today, right? Now, not that. In which, do you want to give an update while you're at it? Yeah, we are at the Pickleball Courts. We are intending to open Saturday for a LifeWise tournament. Uh, swing is done. There are a couple boards that have some issues with them, and we are getting extra boards in case we to replace those, in case we have other issues down the road. So I think everything looks really nice. And boards that you sit on, there are one boards, big pre drilled two holes in the wrong spot, and I noticed the other day, and then one in split that grows and found. So we're getting three new boards and, and extras, too. So I, I think everything looks really good. We're going we're gonna to have some struggles and some learning curves with uh, we made would be North Street. It is a one-way road going east now, and uh, so we added some parking along long North Street there inside Eagle Park. And by the way, it's been the plan. Yes. It's been the plan. And that is to allow parking for the skate park. And actually, I saw the other day, I saw two, two different times I saw cars parked there. So, you know, people let their dogs walk in the, you know, through the non-grass area. Um, so everything's coming along very well. We're hoping we can't get a great answer on hunger when they are coming. We're hoping next month, end of the month, something. We're doing compaction tests. They all sudden requested a compaction test. We're doing that Friday. So, I mean, things are still moving forward, and landscaping hopefully will be in very soon to get grass growing and make it green, hopefully. So, it's going. 
Questions on the part? Yeah. Uh, that's the 82 4, right? Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve the payment application for Shankle Construction in the amount of $82,400.15 is presented. Motion second. Further discussion? All those in favor the usual sign is <coughs> unanimous. <coughs> Next up is Green Hill Cemetery Mowing Agreement. Rosie? Um, I'm just property management. I us a proposal for the next three years to extend their current agreement. I actually put the agreement in there in the last one, and it's increasing, I think, $500 per year. year. Per year, for three years. Um, I kind of asked Kelly and been happy with them, and I think everybody else has been too. So uh, I just see you want to go ahead and extend their agreement rather than trying to go out with things in there. And possibly not. Questions? Questions of Rossi? Yes, Rossi. Oh, jeez. <laughs> for the Okay. Well, I will. Um, well, let me ask the question of Marsha. Do we need a formal, do we need a formal extension to be signed by us, or can we just approve the extension? You see what I'm asking? Because um, we have the contract that's a part yeah, of this. We probably should have. Yes. But I think I guess you can, you can approve it, and then for this to be signed. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Anybody, any issues? So basically, the decision tonight is that we're not going to go out and bid; that we're going to just extend the contract with Hodges, and the next time we'll actually approve the contract itself. <coughs> the contract, right? Okay. I'll make a motion we approve with that we that we extend the contract or extend the agreement with Hodges Property Management for mowing of Green Hill Cemetery. Motion seconded. Further discussion? There should be a sign. It is unanimous. Next up, employment training agreement with Austin Service. Gary? Yes, he was uh, approved by PERF and uh, started with the police department on. A few days before the parade, I believe. Right. His hire date was actually the 14th. The first starting work day was the 16th. Mm -hmm. And he signed all the paperwork with that. And the agreement. Okay. Questions of Gary? <coughs> Make a motion we approve, yeah, approve the employment training agreement with Austin Sturgis as presented. Motion second. Further mm -hmm. discussion? A little bit of the usual sign. It is unanimous. Bills. All right. I'll make a motion to pay all accounts payable in the amount of $689,882.76 from the allowance of accounts payable vouchers dated 9 24 24. For checks. Sorry, for checks. <laughs> okay, sorry. Motion second. Further discussion? A little bit of the usual sign. It is unanimous. I make a motion for all accounts payable in the amount of one million one hundred and forty one thousand six hundred and sixty five dollars and fifty four cents from the allowance accounts payable vouchers dated nine twenty four twenty twenty four for EFT payments. Sorry. Motion seconded. Further discussion. It was a favor for the usual sign. It is unanimous. I make a motion to pay all accounts payable except overtime in the amount of two hundred and seventy thousand four hundred and ninety three dollars and seventeen cents. Plus overtime in the amount of fifteen thousand eight hundred and twenty three dollars and sixty four cents for a total of two hundred and eighty six thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars and eighty one cents for the pay file in date September sixth, twenty twenty four. I'm sorry. Motion second. I, I got caught up on three hundred and Oh, did I say it wrong? No, no, no. I think you said it perfectly <laughs> fine. I got my brain told me something different. Okay, motion second. Further discussion. All those papers for the usual sign. It is unanimous. It is. It is. Anything else for that? Okay. 
Okay, with that, uh, we'll go to department reports. Kelly. Uh, yeah, we had, I mean, last Friday, the storm that came through, we had a little bit of damage. Um, I got called in for some stuff on Lime Street, and then uh, started getting some calls at uh, Eagle Glen area, so we had uh, two crews out there cleaning up that area. The rest of the town really wasn't too bad. Um, they had more damage than like everybody else, so we went out there, took the sweeper out, cleaned that up, and um, we had the sweeper out now um, all week and continue to clean up the debris. Um, Timber's image, um, we're still having an inspector out there, um, still putting in sewer line out there, so kind of periodically checking in on that. And then um, sign maintenance, we have guys deal with that. Some of the signs, remember 15 years ago when we started placing street name signs, some of those are getting faded now. And uh, we got, I think, close to 50 or so that we need to change out, 40 or 50, something like that. Um, so we'll be working on that. And then uh, we pick up, I've had people question me when we're going to start that. It's the 21st is the official day of October, but um, you know I have seen some piles around and there's stuff in the gutters, so um, we may get machine out next week and, and make a trip through town and uh, and then just revisit that you know before the 21st again to see if it warrants um, going around again. So it seems kind of weird saying that being the first of October out. We've never. When you get 50, 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts, and that's. Uh, and I suppose with the dry conditions this year, it's probably added to it. Um, things fall maybe a little earlier. I'm not sure. But. And then uh, our last one pick up will be October 7th. So. Question of Kelly. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. uh, Westgate is nearly complete. They just need to put the surface down, last coat of asphalt, which the weather is not cooperating with us. And we also have two more light poles put in, which the weather is not cooperating with us. But that ribbon cutting is scheduled for October 2nd at 6 o'clock. You all are all invited. It is going to be incredible. Uh, Eagle Park, as I already said, we're doing that ribbon cutting noon, October 3rd. 12 o'clock noon. Um, that'll probably be one of the wildest ribbon cuttings you've ever been to. So I highly suggest if you get off work, Lisa, to come to that one. Um, Blue River Trail, we had a pre uh, bid meeting this morning. We had some good turnout for that. They don't think for that is October 14th at 5 o'clock. And uh, other than that, got nothing else. Questions of the chip. So again, Westgate ribbon cutting is October 2nd at 6 p.m. Corner of intersection, sorry, intersection of Lawrence and Buddale. Nope, Lawrence and Westgate. Westgate Avenue. And then the ribbon cutting at Eagle Park will be at noon on the third. Okay. Questions? No. Matt. Uh, we're getting ready for the mother son uh, coming up here. October 25th, I believe. Um, the guys are getting the games ready from last year that may have gotten broken um, by a transport or whatever. They've also been uh, using some creativity in making some new games, um, trying to keep the kids that have been coming, uh, wanting to keep coming, so different games. Um, Eagle Park, uh, we were staging area for the Shriners last weekend. Um, we also had JFL. It was very crowded, and uh, as that part gets used more and more, um, I don't know how the parade situation will will be and how it will all fit in there. Um, but it's a good problem to have because we're going to be having all kinds of activities over there. Um, with the water department's help, we were able to get the irrigation system going on the football field and the practice field um, so we could try to soften up the ground and then just as karma <laughs> we get quite a bit of rain this week so um, and uh, we did get kudos on social media about that just so you're aware 
I heard that this morning, so I was surprised. Yep. Um, the hands uh, group from Woodley, uh, the foundation, uh, came out and painted the rest of the concrete walls that we have back at the pond. Um, they did a nice job on that. Um, other than that, we're having some padding installed Friday, this Friday, that we had ordered last year, but they weren't able to install it before pool season because we already had a pool. <laughs> to get open by Memorial Day. So, and that's it. But for Matt, thank you, Gary. Well, as I mentioned with the uh, agreement, Austin Sturgis has been approved by Perth and started the FTO process and doing well in the second week, so that's good. Um, we do have four applicants still in the interview process, and while we're speaking about that, I would like to ask permission to hire four if they continue through the successfully through the interview process uh, for decent applicants and uh, Brian's retiring in January of 25 and Scott's scheduled to retire in June of 25. So we place those guys and get the training going ahead of time. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm you okay with hiring for so they, that's assuming that you give the approval. Right. 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 Okay. So I'm, I'm in favor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we have, we did hire uh, Madison Elliott, Consuelo Bridge, and Marissa Taylor for communications. And they've all started and seem to be working out well. Uh, we did have a, I did have a call since we closed the streets there at Whitley. There was no parking on Whitley. And Van Buren, that first half block, uh, someone did call with a concern. The first call I had uh, reference what, like, the no parking down that whole street. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I sat down there for about an hour one day, and about an hour another day, just kind of monitored stuff. And we did talk about that in the very beginning, but we thought if we did no parking all the way down through there, for one, it's going to pretty much put a burden on the residents that have no parking. Um, but it would create a, a speedway down through there too. So, I mean, it, it is a little bit of a you know, it, it, patience thing. Uh, if people would just turn left or right, it doesn't work. Just they go all the way up and quickly to Van Buren. They can go to Washington or Madison. Or but we have not had any accidents on the Whitley Street I think there in was, that area. I think there was one minor rear end where someone stopped and the car didn't really have he started to go and then he stopped again. But there was no hitting of parked cars or no. anything like that no. that we've seen. Okay. Okay. So, probably just continue to look the way it is right now, currently. Okay. I think it's working out well. Okay. I said I don't have any issues when I do travel up and down that road. Um, it's trying, it's trying pretty well. Didn't have any issues there. I think for, you know, many streets have been moved down through town there. We are doing training on the new Milo system. We do have that. It's coming to install it the first week of October and do a refresher training for us for all the instructors in the Milo firearm system, simulation system. Uh, we'll be hosting emergency vehicle operations for the whole county uh, on Tower View on October 6th, which is a Sunday. And we pick Sunday just for purposes of ease of closing that street down and not creating a big hazard for all the businesses there. But we do have people at each end of that and if a business or something needs to get through and we have support for all the businesses down through there. So. Question Gary. Thanks, sir. Mike? Uh, the last week we replaced probably 30 meters and uh, I think we've got 10 more to do but some of them we have to get in, into the building to do and that. So, and then we've got three or four big meters. It's just not reading. They're new. They read to the handheld. They're just not getting back to the, mm -hmm. the canvas part of it. So uh, also Friday we had a big main break on Park Drive and Park uh, Park Street there, and 
it's still a mess up there in the yard yet because of the rain. We can't get in there and clean that up. But other than that, I, I am getting a, a training set up for the fire department on hydrants. I'm not saying they caused it, <laughs> but it's just they were in that area. Correlation does not equal causation. Yeah, so we're going to get a, a training set up that at least explain how a hydrant works and how a uh, water hammer is and that. And Probably that. a good refresher anyway. So, so yeah. it's, it's bad. It, it, what's bad is it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the city fire department that's done it. Yeah, I think. Not the county. You know, I wouldn't expect it from the city. But we'll get this taken care of. Question of Jeff. Thank you. Fine. Uh, today I received our modified, well, our graph modified for minutes. Uh, and my third thing I think I found was the comment date was incorrect. That September was issued and the comment date due by was August. Oh, that's good. 24, so I called them and uh, let them know that. Uh, storage tank mixer, one of those are out of service. You can't get it up, so there's something wrong with the guide pipe or the guide uh, trail on that. We can figure that out. Uh, last Thursday we had CSO audit. Uh, there's four members from IDEM and myself, and we conducted the audit on Thursday. That's about five hours long. Sounds uh, like a good use of state resources. Yeah, that's why I told them. It's a four on one, and so this was the entire. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any comments back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I haven't completed that. Just waiting back on the letter. Uh, it's a, a new lady that's in the position, so we'll see how that goes. Might be really detailed, we'll have to see. Uh, we also received a certified performance test from Vaughn, which is the pumps, pump manufacturer for Jefferson Main, the Evan Portman project. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's waiting on the uh, engineer to approve those, and once they're approved, those will ship. And so then we can get the start with that part of that process, get those installed. So moving along, just not as fast as I want, but we'll get there. Where's the mic? Thank you, Terry. Well, we finished most of the work on the grant upgrade for the street department's televising truck from, I believe, all the way to the now. We saw a new access point in the engineer's office in the fire department, so they have several guys under the head laptop to be connected to the network, and they don't have the network connection. Mm -hmm. so, so that's in there for them. Um, we decommissioned one server exchange server today. Uh, instead of upgrading that, we push those to the cloud on the 365. So that's more or less that we have to upgrade and we're starting the process on the next one later this week. Uh, equipment's been uh, ordered for the test kitchen. I know Sean's trying to get fiber and have a little bit of difficulty with that. And SOS has largely been out of the feed with cart working on that portion of the fiber, trying to get it into the what I call a concession area, so when you talk there about it. Uh, luckily, Sean was forward thinking and had already put a conduit underground into the building, so we didn't have to cut up the brand new concrete. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out really well, thanks to Sean. There, so, because so then we went to Sean, right? Yeah, he did it. And when he called me, he said, Well, I'm going to have to cut that concrete, and I'm going to call Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it worked out, so we didn't have to destroy any of the new concrete. So that's all. Question of Terry. Thank you. Thomas. Well, um, I will call it the irritating gremlin is back in 102, and the electrical system is back at it. Adam is pretty frustrated. Now, take nothing away from the guy. He has worked on this thing relentlessly trying to get to the bottom of it. The body had it. Um, the good news is we have pump testing scheduled to next Tuesday, which will end up still sending 101 and 107 to Shriner Lake for that. The same company that does the pump testing is also their EVT, the emergency vehicle technicians. They're going to come in, work with Adam, see, them, see if whatever everything he's done, and see if they have any further ideas. If they can't get to the bottom of it at that point, they're going to contact Spartan, who made the truck, and we may end up having to send it down to Anne, Ohio to have it repaired. So, hopefully that all works. 
It knows no. that trip well, though. Huh? I said I think it knows that trip well, back and forth the end. It does know that trip very well. Um, it's what, it's what happens when you have a piece of equipment, which we are replacing, so um, I think the board works for that. Um, windows for the upstairs of the firehouse. Uh, we discussed this a while back. They're half replaced. The gentleman is going to be here again tonight to keep working on that. So um, to get a better deal, he's doing it in his off time. And, um, Paul Davis is working with him. He's uh, Paul Davis, working through Paul Davis to do that. Um, so working out very well. The air conditioning system um, was replaced last, late last week. Um, I ended up having to do a kind of emergency street closure um, because it was a little bit more dangerous than I anticipated with the training. So um, I followed the board of I did ask for permission on that one. <coughs> Random text from Sally. Hey, by the way, Market Street's closed. Uh, I walked in utilities and I, I do, I read a lot of people, so they took the opportunity. Yes. Gary said that the Shriner parade went very well. He obviously was not standing at the intersection of Jefferson and Whitley where people were letting me know of their displeasure. Um, it, it, was, it is our bypass route for Main Street, so I kind of get some of people's frustration. Okay. What Whitley Street is. is yeah. 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 It, 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 it was okay. People understood they were just a little frustrated. Um, and I'd like to personally thank Kelly, the department. Um, that storm went through weather. I'm sorry, Eagle Glen affected my dad's house. There was a tree down, and we drove the limbs up, and they took care of it. So, just a personal thank you to the department. Okay, that's it. Folks, the Tom. Thank you. Uh, I do have one more my weekly report, and that is from Sean. He said uh, the cold sack lane is all bored and trenched uh, in now. They are pulling wires and setting transformers uh, week this week. Uh, uh, talked about fiber. Let's see. Um, installed three of the five street lights at Westgate. I don't know if they've done any more of those this week yet, but um, they're working on it. He said that he's already got complaints that they're too bright. <laughs> and we have been able to say they need more. So what? Yeah, we've moved them all. We, we as an electric department. Uh -huh. okay. okay. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, Roman weed or the proverbial the British weed. Uh, anyway, um, let's see here. Uh, uh, he is uh, IMPA is has nominated him to be the committee chair for the operating committee. I don't know what that means, um, but he also is going to be traveling to the IME lineman rodeo to be a judge this coming Saturday. So um, a couple of his guys uh, are going to be in Frankfurt for lineman training, and that's about it. So, uh, Marsha. Nothing. Rosie. A couple things I need to make you aware of. First of all, uh, as Matt said earlier, we um, things were really dry, and so we put things in place, like started, I like got the uh, sprinkler system in place and all that stuff at the, at, at the uh, field uh, at Eagle Park. Uh, I put a bird van in place um, because our, our fire chiefs on Thursday night had recommended, strongly recommended it. And at that time, the forecast for the next five days was very dry. Very little, little smatterings of rain, but not much. Um, so we instituted that on Friday, and three hours later, very promptly, we got uh, what, half an inch of rain that fell from the sky, and uh, then got some rain yesterday, got some rain today. Um, but I have gotten, uh, we have been in conversation with our EMA director, uh, so I'm gonna just tell you what she said, and that is that um, uh, the fire chief's consensus, not our fire chief, but the fire chief's association consensus, is to wait until Thursday before we remove that van. Um, and that is, the consensus opinion is that the ground absorbed most of the rainfall, but conditions still remain relatively dry. So it's just out of an overabundance of caution, if you will. So we're gonna reevaluate that Thursday, which by the way, was what we had already planned to do anyways, is to reevaluate on Thursday. So just wanna let you know kind of where we're at on the burn van thing. Um, 
Let's see, today I gave a rotary presentation with Lee Botts on the utility rate advisory board. Uh, we had a special meeting to discuss some potential changes to our wellness clinic that are, that are being proposed. Uh, Monday we had third graders visiting City Hall and so that was like two straight hours of third graders and that was a lot of fun and exhausting at the same time. Uh, today uh, we had a proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month um, and we have Youth Council on Thursday and then I will be out of the office Friday through the following Wednesday. Um,